This is chapter 14, discussion number 5, the Russian Revolution. We're going to take a little bit of time here, and we're going to take take a look at what exactly caused Russia to leave World War I. First of all, we have to remember that Russia, while it had the largest army as far as number of men, really had a hard time keeping up with the technology and the productivity of the rest of the Western world, primarily because they are still stuck in a feudal type of economic system. So while Tsar Nicholas II held power over other major political players in Russia, the idea of feudalism also restricted the modernization opportunities for political and industrial sectors of Russia. Uh, they did have an elected legislature called the Duma that really didn't have much power. Uh, there was a very corrupt bureaucracy as everyone was making sure that their friends were well taken care of. And the corrupt court system meant that favorites were getting uh, judgments and not any type of justice or equality. And so there's a large amount of discontent with what's going on in Russia. Now, World War I uh, brought increased amount of patriotism. Uh, everyone's like, go Russia. Unfortunately, it became evident that Russia didn't even have enough guns for its soldiers. They were very poorly supplied. Russians were being killed because of the inept leadership of the economic and military leadership of Russia. It became evident that Russia was not going to be succeeding in World War I. And Tsar Nicholas II off resigned said, we need to have a new government that can do a better job than what I'm doing. The provisional government was led by the middle class industrialist who started to create a democratic government. They were going to try to keep, because they knew they didn't want the Germans running over Russia, uh, so they were going to keep in the war, defend Russia, and try to do a better job of it. However, that didn't quite work. The lower class of people, uh, as the the middle class industrialists were trying to set up the power at the top, the local leadership wasn't being paid attention to. And so the lower classes of people established Soviets or what they what the Russian for local councils that would take care of their local concerns. But the Bolsheviks started to take control over these local councils and began to influence that the whole country should go toward communism led by the Bolsheviks. Uh, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin was the leader of these Bolsheviks. And so we've got the Duma Republic uh, that was being established by these middle class industrialists who are trying to maintain the control of Russia. And the Bolsheviks have, the, um, have a lot of these local people and they start fighting each other over who's going to control Russia. And eventually the Bolsheviks win, primarily because, first of all, they sign a peace treaty with Germany, the Brest-Litovsk Treaty that we talked about previously, and essentially surrendered to Germany everything that they wanted. Russia got back so that Russia could deal with its own problems. And this made uh, the Bolsheviks extremely popular with most of the Russian population because the war was the big problem. And here, these, these are the guys that got them out of the war, as promised. The the Soviets also executed the Tsar and family, and they established the dictatorship of the proletariat, or, or the dictatorship for the working class, as they established the Soviet Union in Russia. Now, the Bolsheviks maintained power in the same way that many autocratic authoritarian governments do. First of all, they established a secret police to rat out those who spoke against the, spoke against the Bolsheviks. These were called the Cheka. Uh, this is the precursor to what we not what we knew as the KGB. They took the banks, they took the mines, the factories, the railroads, and the crops to feed the army. Because remember, the army is the one, even though they didn't have enough weapons to fight Germany, they have more weapons than everyone else in Russia. So if you keep the army happy, the army won't overthrow you. So the Bolsheviks were, were into establishing their control over the entirety of Russia. They also had commissars, people that would essentially teach the truths of communism uh, to enforce party loyalties. Uh, so that everyone would be uh, thrilled that the Bolsheviks were taken care of in a kind of education slash uh, uh, mind washing of the ideas. But in reality, the communists were just as autocratic as the Tsar, and they enforced the will on the people through the secret police and through the army. Uh, now, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, when it was found out that well, communism 
is basically established where everyone shares everything and everyone's supposed to work equally and everyone is provided for, it doesn't work. The new economic plan of 1921, as communism was trying to be imposed on Russia, starved the farmers as all the food was taken to feed the cities. And even they were starving. And so they discovered that if they allowed people to have their own land and grow their own food and be able to sell it for their own profit, wow, anti-communism, also known as capitalism, actually was able to feed them. However, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin dies, and after a bit of a struggle, Joseph Stalin takes control of the Soviet Union and kills off all of his competition, including Leon Trotsky, who was uh, murdered in Mexico, and Stalin is able to establish his control and establishes communism even deeper into the Russian economy. And so... Uh, the Russian Revolution starts with Russia leaving. We have the civil war between the Reds and the Whites. The Reds win, the Soviets, uh, the Communists, and then we eventually get to Joseph Stalin establishing his control over the Russian Empire, and that, and he will continue to be in control of, of Russia, or what we now know as the Soviet Union, uh, up to and through World War II. This concludes discussion number five, the Russian Revolution. It also finishes Chapter 14, World War I and the Re Russian Revolution.